Well, good evening and welcome to this emergency nationwide pro-life webcast, Mission Critical. This is the event where you're going to learn about America's defining battle for life right now in 2023 and how together we can help to stop the state-by-state -state spread of abortion. You are in the right place at the right time. I want to be the first to officially welcome you and so many others who are gathering here from all across the United States of America and even some people who are gathering from outside the borders of our nation. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 20, we're told by our Lord, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. And we gather tonight in his name, we gather not as two or three, but we gather in even larger numbers. I just checked right before we logged in here. And as of this moment, we have 2,452 people participating in this online event. And there is tremendous power as we gather in his name, in collective prayer, in unity, and as we invite our Lord's divine presence to guide us through this conversation. As I said, I'm so excited to be the first to officially welcome you to this mission critical webcast. I'm honored to be serving as your host, your master of ceremonies for our time together. If we have not met before, I was blessed previously to serve as the founder and former CEO of the global 40 days for life movement. Maybe you've been a part of that endeavor. That was an effort that I was blessed to lead through its first decade. And I'm continuing on in my mission of spreading the good news of Jesus in the process right now of launching a new media project called The David B. Wright Show, which will be launching over the next few weeks across radio stations, radio networks, online video and podcast platforms. And it's a show that's all about awakening, empowering and mobilizing Christians to stand up for our faith, family, life and liberty so we can bring the light of Jesus Christ to the darkness of our world. And as I was getting ready to get on here, I thought, wait a minute, that's exactly what we're doing here together on this webcast right now. So maybe I'll just treat this like it's a pilot episode of the show. Amidst all the craziness of setting up a broadcast studio, working with an amazing production team, putting together all the needed elements and technology and so much more, also due to the urgency of this moment, I have been traveling all across America since the overturn of Roe versus Wade, I've been to 32 states working on the front lines with advocates and leaders and organizations and rallying tens of thousands of people to get involved in the crucial causes of our day. One of these trips really stood out to me a couple of weeks ago, and it was when I was invited to Ohio by my friend Peter Range, who we'll be hearing from here this evening. Peter's the CEO of Ohio Right to Life, and he asked me to come out there to help rally people and raise funds for this critical effort that we are here talking about tonight. But when I got there, I was so deeply moved to firsthand experience what has become the single most crucial pro-life battle in America this year. And I was so inspired by the dedication and the selflessness of the people who are working so hard on the front line, some of whom you'll be hearing from tonight. So I left that event inspired, but as I was flying home, I just had this nagging sense on my heart and on my soul that I had something more that I could do. And so I prayed and I asked God, what more can I do? But also as I prayed, I thought, what more could I invite others to do to help Ohio in their time of need. And that was when I felt led to organize this webcast. I reached out to Peter and the group of Protect Women Ohio, and I said, how can we do something to rally people? And so just over these last few days, we threw this online event together, and it's amazing. We have over 2,400 people here. But tonight we'll be sharing with you the latest news about what's happening right now on the front lines in Ohio. We'll also be sharing the national implications of this fight and we will each be able to assess how we can make a life-saving impact at this crucial moment, regardless of where we live. When we look at the context, the landscape right now, it's important to understand that our tide has been shifting since the overturn of Roe versus Wade. It has not been turning in the favor of life. If you were to put a big scoreboard in a football stadium, right now it would read abortion six, pro-life zero because that is the score since Roe versus Wade's of removal, reversal in 2022. The abortion industry has been claiming victory after victory, and they have been winning all six out of six state ballot initiatives. The stakes right now are higher than ever. 
Right now, there are nine to 11 more state ballot initiatives on the horizon next year in 2024, and the abortion industry, Planned Parenthood, is furiously mobilizing funds and followers, and America's pro-life future literally is hanging in the balance. But in the midst of all of this mounting storm, Ohio has emerged as the linchpin of hope. Now, if we look at history, Ohio has always been a bellwether state, and we've frequently seen Ohio decide the outcome of presidential elections. Its influence is certainly undeniable. It extends far beyond its borders. But Ohio has an interesting legacy that I saw when I was there a couple of weeks ago. Ohio has a legacy of people who've made the impossible become possible. From the Wright brothers, who ran a bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio, inventing, building, and then flying the first successful air, airplane, people said that was impossible. They made it possible. Or what about Neil Armstrong, another person, another Ohioan? He was the first human to walk on the moon when people said that was impossible, but yet one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Or Thomas Edison, born in Ohio, invented the light bulb, the phonograph, the motion picture camera. We wouldn't have lights on right now if it weren't for him. He made the impossible possible. But what really struck me profoundly when I was in Ohio is when I learned that the Ohio State motto draws from that beautiful passage of scripture that says, with God, all things are possible. So the world would say that what we're facing right now on this pro-life versus issue one matter is impossible. Don't you read the polls? Don't you know? But we know as people of faith that with God, all things are possible. And we take great strength from knowing that is Ohio's state motto. Because two weeks from now, Ohio is facing a watershed moment against issue one. Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry's brazen attempt to enshrine abortion in the Ohio state constitution and to impose the nation's most radical pro-abortion law. This is not just Ohio's struggle. For all of us, this is a national tipping point moment. The outcome here can and will dictate the trajectory for the entire United States, whether it's to bolster or to thwart the abortion agenda from coast to coast. So by all of us gathering, by the thousands here together and standing resolute with Ohio, we have an opportunity to halt the abortion industry's surge and pivot our national momentum towards life. So during our time together, you're going to hear from a lineup of all-star lineup of speakers who are going to help you to understand the hidden agenda, the covert manipulative strategies that the abortion industry is deploying in Ohio, desperately trying to reshape America. You're also going to learn about the ripple effect, how the outcome in Ohio can set that precedent that will reverberate across the nation. Tonight, you'll also be hearing about the strategy for victory. With just two weeks left, you're going to hear about the tools, the tactics, and the mobilization plans that can give pro-lifers the upper hand in this high-stakes battle. Remember, with God, all things are possible. Tonight, we'll also be understanding the power of unity in action. And you're going to learn how pro-lifers from coast to coast are mobilizing in support of Ohio and how each of us can join forces to make a monumental impact for life. And you're going to learn how to win, what each of us, you and I, can do to help secure a victory in Ohio, again, regardless of whether we live in New Jersey or North Dakota or California or Virginia. And tonight, we'll also look ahead to our pro-life future, the steps we need to take to ensure pro-life progress, not only in Ohio, but with people joining us from coast to coast all across our great nation of America. So with that, we are going to start this event the most important way we can as we get ready to dive in, and that is with a word of spiritual significance to help us understand the spiritual implications of this battle, but also with a word of opening prayer. And to do that, I would like to bring to the stage Bishop Daniel E. Thomas from the Diocese of Toledo, Ohio. Bishop Thomas, thank you so much for being a part of this event. How are you this evening? David, thank you. A delight to be with you and all those who are with us. And I just feel very privileged and honored to stand shoulder to shoulder with all the folks who are on this webcast this evening and to stand shoulder to shoulder with all the splendid pro-life folks throughout our nation who are doing so much to help us here in the state of Ohio. Well, Bishop Thomas, what I would love is for you to help us prepare for this event by leading us in prayer and then any spiritual thoughts you have for those of us who are people of faith to understand the implications of this struggle, that it is a spiritual battle first and foremost, even as we engage in public policy and other aspects of the pro-life movement. 
Thank you. David, united with my brother Catholic bishops of the state of Ohio, we presented uh, long ago and far away, it seems. But now here we are up against this in almost two weeks, some people already having voted early, obviously. We offered this prayer for all people, and in particular, our faithful to pray. So I'd like to offer that prayer, which our Catholic Conference of Ohio presented. Let us pray. Ever-living God, you give life and desire a future for all your children. Take hold of our nation, state, and community, and awaken in every heart awe for the gift of life. Send your spirit to strengthen us with wisdom and fortitude as we defend mothers and children in Ohio from laws that disregard their health and safety. Mary and Joseph trusted in you and welcomed Jesus into our broken world. Father, we ask their intercession to protect the preborn and their mothers and to guide all parents in raising their children. May they help us build a civilization of love by upholding the sacredness of life, preserving parental rights, and accompanying pregnant women in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Mother of the Family, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Protector of the Unborn, pray for us. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Bishop Thomas. We greatly appreciate your spiritual leadership and please pass along our thanks to all of the bishops of the state of Ohio. It's a joy to have you here with us. Okay, well, we have a special surprise. When you signed up for this event, this was not something that you were told about, but you are going to get to hear from a very special surprise guest who happens to be the 70th governor of the state of Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine. Governor DeWine, it is such a blessing to have you with us on the webcast. How are you this evening? I'm great, good to be with all of you. Thank you very much. You bet. Well, Governor, we have over 2,500 people here gathered from all across the country, and we all want to pray. We want to help Ohio stand up against issue one. So what words would you have of encouragement or thanks to all those who are here praying for and offering to help the Buckeye State? Well, first of all, thank you all for joining us tonight. And we are in a battle in Ohio. Uh, it is over what is called in Ohio issue one. And it is a very radical uh, proposition. It is a constitutional amendment, which if successful would go into our Ohio constitution, which would mean of course, that it would trump every, every law uh, that we have, we have had. Uh, when you analyze the constitutional amendment, it is quite, quite radical. Uh, it goes very, very far. It provides that abortion can be uh, occur uh, at, any time up until birth. So uh, a very, very radical um, constitutional amendment. It would also allow, um, as I said, late term, late term abortions. Uh, and it would also uh, preempt or override what we have in Ohio and many states of course have, which is a, a qualification uh, that a parent must be involved uh, uh, in the child's decision uh, whether or not she is going to have abortion when you're talking about a minor. Uh, so that is what uh, it, this constitutional amendment, those are the two big things that the constitutional amendment would do. And again, uh, just to make it very clear, it's a constitutional amendment. So it overrides all of our, all of our statutes. We have, have a law in Ohio uh, uh, outlawing partial birth abortion. Uh, many states have that as well. I was involved uh, along with my friend Rick Santorum from Pennsylvania and others uh, when I was in the United States Senate to get a national uh, ban on uh, partial birth abortion. As you know, this is a, a, a procedure uh, that is very barbaric. Uh, it is the, the birth of the child occurs partially, then the child is killed, and then the, the rest of the child is, is, is brought out. It was developed uh, by Darton. Dr. Haskell in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we, of course, have stopped that now uh, with the provision in, o in Ohio law. 
there is a federal provision, but of course that only applies if we, uh, the people are involved in interstate commerce. So it's very important that that be protected in the state of Ohio, that law be protected. This constitutional amendment would over, override that. So as I've told uh, people, my wife and I actually have done an ad on TV where we say, whether you're pro-choice or, or pro-life, um, issue one just goes much, much too far. Uh, a very radical change in, 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 in the law. Uh, we are involved in a very difficult uh, campaign. Uh, the other side, uh, with money coming in from outside the state of Ohio, has uh, had a lot more ads up than we have, although we are now up uh, with, with our ads, so, and we will we'll continue to do that uh, through Election Day. Uh, if anyone uh, wants, wants to help us, uh, we would, you know, we're still uh, soliciting money. Uh, I spent part of today doing that uh, because we just have to get our message out. Uh, and our, our message is a very, very simple and clear message that this constitutional amendment uh, is just not good for Ohio. Uh, it is not uh, what Ohio really is. And when people fully understand it, that it means that an abortion could occur at any time up to birth, when it means that parents will be taken out of the equation uh, when their daughter is making the most important decision of her life. Uh, I think that when, when people realize that, um, you know, this is certainly not where the majority of Ohioans are. Uh, so for those of you who are not from Ohio, uh, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, we, could, we could use some help here, and uh, we just appreciate you being on. Governor Dwine, thank you so much for your leadership, and thanks for the encouragement. And I hope for everyone around the country, this underscores for you that whatever pro-life laws and protections you have in place, the abortion industry wants to strip those away. And so if we don't stand strong against this issue one in Ohio, they're gonna to come to your state next. And so Governor Dwine, thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you for inviting all of us to help out with this fight and count on our prayers for you and for the Buckeye State moving forward. Thank you so much for joining the webcast. We really appreciate it. Okay, so next up, we get to hear from a dear friend and a longtime colleague of mine. Peter Range is the CEO of Ohio Right to Life. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it's really kind of his fault that we're having this webcast because I was just out with him a few weeks ago. And Peter, first of all, how are you doing tonight? David, I'm doing great. I got to celebrate some marshmallows with my four little kiddos, seven, five, three, and one. So you can't beat that. Indeed, indeed. Now you got to bring some for the rest of us, right? If you have some, you got to bring them for everybody on the webcast. As of now, it's like 2,600 bags of marshmallows you're going to need. A lot of marshmallows. Like <laughs> so, Peter, the governor just helped us to kind of set the stage of what is going on. And we want to focus on the local first, and then we'll bring in the national perspective from some of our national leaders. But you and several others have been really leading the charge in Ohio. Can you help kind of further unpack what is this issue one and why is this truly such an important battle, not only for Ohio, but really for all of America? Yeah, 100 percent. David, thank you so much, first and foremost, for your leadership and calling us all together. It's so nice to work in the spirit of John 17. You know, Jesus' last prayer in the garden is, Father, let them be one as you and I are one. And it's so great to see the pro-life movement coming together uh, to fight with us here in the state of Ohio. Thank you as well to all the leaders that are on the call and all the participants. It's such a joy for each one of us to know that people care about our state. So thank you so much for that. You know, this okay. Ohio uh, issue one, it just it simply goes too far, as the governor was talking about. And 75% of Ohioans, when they find out that this allows for late-term abortion on demand in our state, when it strips parents of their rights to know what's taking place in their teenagers' lives, 75% of Ohioans reject this, including 60% of those who identify as progressive or liberal. So as the governor was saying, what we need is the finances to be able to get our message out there to the rest of Ohio, because right now we're being outspent two to one by Planned Parenthood, the ACLU, and another group maybe some of the listeners haven't heard about before, but it's a group called URGE. And I think it's important to understand or appreciate these groups that are pushing these amendments. URGE, for example, on their own Twitter accounts, on their own social media accounts, they are for, quote, celebrating all abortions with no exceptions. Therefore, decriminalizing self-managed abortion. Therefore, uh, parental involvement laws, wiping them off the books. This is all things that they have said 
publicly. So, you know, it's something that the whole world can see as far as what these groups are ultimately after. So let's get into how they wrote the amendment. There's three key words that I think our listeners walking away tonight can remember as to why this amendment is so dangerous. And they can look forward to maybe in their own states if they're facing these similar type amendments, these kind of buzzwords. The first one is individual. It says every individual has a right to carry out one's own reproductive decisions, including but not limited to abortion. Nowhere in the document does it say woman or mother at all. Rather, it says individual. And that's because individual, that's a legal term. That means anyone of any age and as well as anyone of any gender as well. Planned Parenthood is becoming one of the leading providers of cross-sex hormones in the country. They're ultimately after our kids at the end of the day. And by saying individual as well, that means that a parent uh, can't necessarily even know if their teenage daughter is considering an abortion. The second kind of key word is the, is the term health. So it says that the doctor can decide, or the treating physician, which in this case is the abortion doctor, um, he can decide whether or not this is good for the patient's health. Now, in Doe v. Bolton, the court defined health to mean all factors. So it goes well beyond viability. Factors like emotional health, mental health, even, even the woman's age relevant to the well-being of the mother. So a woman seven months pregnant could be struggling emotionally. And the abortion doctor could even be pressuring her into saying, well, I think we can take care of this problem here for you. So it allows abortion well beyond viability. It goes too far for even those who identify as pro-choice here in the state of Ohio. The last key term uh, that is in the amendment is the term burden. So Planned Parenthood versus Casey 1992, it set an undue burden on restrictions when it came to abortion access, but they simply dropped the undue term and they just said anything that burdens, penalizes, discriminates against an individual exercising this right must be done away with, including any individual that is helping another individual exercise this right. So you could have a soccer coach in high school who just takes his soccer player to Planned Parenthood and all he's doing is helping that individual exercise their right. This is incredibly dangerous for us here in the state of Ohio. And as I travel the state, it's not just the CEO of Ohio Right to Life, but it's a, as a parent of four kids that God forbid they might find themselves in a situation. Um, I want to be able to talk to them about the challenges they might be facing. So the national implications for us, look, this is, as you said, David, we're, we're 0 for 6 in the pro-life movement. And there might be up to 11 states then next year that face these similar ballot initiatives. We have to win here. This is a Gettysburg type moment where the, we've seen some victories uh, from the left on this issue. And now they're coming into red territory, a state that is conservative, a state with a great conservative governor, Mike DeWine. Um, so they're trying to win here to bring that roadmap to the rest of the nation. We have to stop them here so we can help the rest of the nation stop this momentum as well. And I think we can do it here in Ohio because we've seen They've been spending $9 million on TV ads, yet their polls, they've gone down by five points. So we believe we can win, but we need your help financially, spiritually, and practically. So thanks for joining with us tonight. All right, Peter, thank you so much. And we will bring you on for the last word at the end of the event. So appreciate your leadership and your help on this. It is now time for us to hear from somebody I just met a couple of weeks ago when I was there in Ohio. It happened that there were three Davids speaking in the event. And you're gonna hear from all three of them tonight, me, our next guest, and then who will lead us in the closing prayer. But it's my honor to introduce the Attorney General of the state of Ohio, David Yost. Dave, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well, thank you, David. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, well, Attorney General, I was hoping for you to be able to share with us from a legal perspective why people across Ohio, as well as those who are joining from far beyond, should stand opposed to this dangerous issue one measure, and then also similar ballot initiatives like this that aim to enshrine abortion in state constitutions elsewhere? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, people often don't understand the difference between a constitution and a statute. A statute can be initiated by the voters, uh, it's most commonly passed by the legislature. That's why we all elect legislators to go to the state capitol and pass laws. Uh, but those laws are judged by a higher law, the Constitution. And in Ohio, since 1912, when the right of the voters to amend the Constitution directly uh, began, Ohio is, like a lot of other states, uh, amended its constitution from time to time by what we call direct initiative. Uh, in Ohio, that's been 19 times. There has never been an instance in which a constitutional amendment that was passed by the initiative 
has ever been repealed. The bottom line is once this is enshrined in the Constitution, it doesn't change. It stays there pretty much forever. The legislature can't do anything about it. And the rest of the people that get elected to run the government have no say in it. Uh, so they're uh, trying to close down the debate post Dobbs, meaning the people that are bringing the initiative. And as you've already heard, there are many really amazing and far reaching implications. I put together a legal analysis for those that like to get in the weeds and would like to know more. You can read on my website, uh, the Ohio, just Google the Ohio Attorney General, and you'll see a red button at the top that says learn more about issue one and issue two. It gives you details about what is going to happen, what laws are going to be implicated. But the bottom line is this is not a reset button. This is not taking it back to the way it used to be or even putting it back to Roe versus Wade. This is a very broad, even radical new standard that sweeps broader than the law has ever swept before, even more than Roe versus Wade. Well, Attorney General Dave Yost, thank you so much for sharing. And I would encourage everybody, Google Ohio Attorney General and get that legal analysis of issue one. So not only can you know what's at stake in Ohio, but also be on guard against these same kinds of attacks wherever it is you live. Uh, Attorney General, thank you for making time to be with us here this evening. Appreciate you. Okay. Well, next up, we have Molly Smith, who is going to be joining us. Molly is the president of Cleveland Right to Life and longtime pro-life leader and advocate. Molly, we all know that Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry justify the killing of innocent children and the harming of women. So clearly they're not going to have any problem resorting to lies, manipulation, deception to impose their agenda. Can you reveal to us some of the underhanded tactics that are being deployed right now by abortion proponents in Ohio so we can all be on guard against these kinds of schemes and also so we can know how can we best overcome them? Um, David, I've lost my sound. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I can't even hear you. That's fine. You don't need to, I don't, you just need to hear me. All right, so what I would like to say is firstly, number one, I've been put in a very, very, um, great place because um, I am part of Right to Life Action Coalition. I was a founding member of Right to Life Action Co uh, Coalition, which is a grassroots, boots on the ground organization across um, across Ohio, all, all kinds of organizations that have been part, that are part of this. They have been in the weeds dealing with the deception that's going on with regards to this, this campaign. One of the things that is very frustrating for them is, is the lies that are being told. That's something that we've all got to be aware of. I think um, if we don't find a way to to counter those lies, um, it's going to be very difficult for us to, to um, defeat this. And that's why I'm going to appeal to everybody. You have to help us to be able to get on the air, get on get onto the televisions, get onto digital, get onto radio. We need to be able to counter the lies. Here are some of the lies. Let me just tell you. The lies that have been told by the opposition is that there is no health care for miscarriages or ectopic pregnancies in Ohio. Seriously, they are actually telling people that. They're also saying that, that late-term abortion is not happening in Ohio. Of course it's happening. The, all, the other part of this whole thing is that the, there's, um, there's a huge push um, for sex change and, and sex, uh, sex change surgery or, or treatment that's coming through this amendment. The opposition is saying, oh, that's not happening. Of course it's happening. We will see it happen here and we will be very, it will devastate Ohio. Taking away uh, parental rights is another thing that, they, that the opposition is saying, that's not happening. We will never take away parental rights. Well, it's right there. You've just had a senior attorney general on, 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 the, uh, on the webinar as the, the, uh, the, uh, the governor. Both agree that this is what is going to happen. They've also started to say that there is no that abortion is illegal in Ohio right now. Well, we all know that that's not true either. So we have to find a way to counter these move, the, the, these lies. And I think that the best way we can do this is have everybody join together, 
everybody across the whole nation, as goes Ohio, so goes the nation. We need to fight hard here. If any of you out there that are from other states, even in state, please, we need to have your support. We need your boots on the ground. If you can help us in any way, and I know somebody, I know Mark Harrington's going to be on the call. He will also stress this. We need every single able-bodied person out there involved in this. The only way we will counter this, we don't have as much money as the opposition, as Governor DeWine explained, but we can do this if we everybody starts to work together. So that's that's my, I really hope that everybody does this. Well, Maul, you can't hear me, but thank you very, very much for participating in the webcast. We really appreciate your help and guidance on this. And it reminds me when my family and I, back in 2006, went and spent several days in South Dakota, they were working to try to ban abortion, the vote yes on six effort. And we just said, you know what, this is a family mission. And we got in our car and we drove up to South Dakota and we went door knocking and we went phone banking and holding signs and everything else. And so maybe there's somebody who says, hey, two weeks left, I can be boots on the ground. And we'll talk about some of the opportunities, but there's also plenty of other things that all of us can do from wherever it is we live. So I'm gonna bring up our next guest now and he is a guy who is doing great things in leading this charge in ohio aaron bear aaron serves as the president of the center for christian virtue aaron how are you tonight david i'm doing great blessed to be with you my friend oh my goodness well hey <clears throat> you are such a strategist and i would really love for you to help unpack the ohio statewide strategy to defeat issue one and how all of us as people of faith and conscience can hope to prevail over this attack on life and other ones the abortion industry is planning in other states yeah, absolutely. And first, David, let me thank you and for Peter for, for pulling to this together. Uh, I'm pretty sure at this point we're beating whatever's on Fox News tonight on the rating scale. So uh, really, really well done, uh, my friends. Uh, and, and yeah, you know, I, I think there, there's a number of different things uh, that, that are going on that, that really make Ohio different. Uh, you know, you started off with that scoreboard of 0 for 6. Uh, and it's something that we have really been uh, mindful of, of, okay, how do we make Ohio different than any of these other states so far? And uh, and it's the reason why we actually have hope uh, right now in Ohio is that we've, we've been able to make some very strategic moves uh, from, from the get-go. Uh, you know, again, kudos to Peter and to, to Molly Smith uh, at Right to Life Action Coalition of Ohio, uh, that, that we've been pulling the pro-life groups together in, in Ohio for, for about 10 months now. Uh, and really, Ohio has never been more unified uh, you know, and, and gearing up for this push, both on the, the grassroots effort and the door-to-door uh, -door effort. Um, you saw for yourself, one of the things that makes things different in Ohio is that we have Governor DeWine. You know, you compare what Governor DeWine is doing in Ohio right now compared to what Governor Whitmer did. Uh, and it's literally night and day. It's darkness and light uh, for, for what's happening. Um, but also you see the, the churches stepping up like never before. Uh, you know, the, the Catholic Church has, has really jumped in, but also the, the evangelical denominations, Southern Baptist Assemblies of God, uh, that have really leaned in. Uh, and that's one thing that I, I think can't be underestimated when we're talking about this grassroots effort. You know, you have this massive door-to-door -door effort that created equal and Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America are leading where we're, we're probably making upwards of 100,000 voter contacts a week uh, at, at this point. Uh, but also you see churches stepping up and putting yard signs out. And, you know, really at CCB, we've been equipping them with bulletin inserts and other things like this. And same, same thing with other organizations to, to say, churches, you're allowed to take a, a, a stance on an issue like this and say, vote no on issue one. You can preach a sermon on that. You can actually give to the campaign. Um, I think that that last point here, David, and, and I know folks, um, you know, it, it's something that we keep coming back to, but I, I, we can't stress it enough. Uh, really, we've been able to to get on TV and spend those resources uh, to uh, to drive our message out, to get messages out that that resonate with people that say, "Listen, whether you're pro life or pro choice, issue one just goes too far." We see those messages work. We just need to be able to get get them to every corner because every time we up our TV buy, I know you know this week we're spending probably about one point seven million dollars or more on TV. Same time we do that, we saw they placed a three point three million dollar ad buy. Uh, and so for us, that's the name of the game right now. Um, we, we're seeing actually, as Peter mentioned, the, the polling is is starting to look encouraging for us. We also saw some really encouraging early vote numbers, uh, where in more more traditional conservative pro-life areas, uh, those early votes are are actually uh, going up. Uh, and in some of the more pro-choice, pro-abortion areas, uh, we see those numbers uh, maybe being a little bit flatter. So there's, there's some encouraging signs that we can win this. We just have to get it over the edge and that's going to take prayer 
Uh, that's going to take a lot of grassroots efforts, door to door stuff, pastors and folks stepping up. Um, and that's also going to take the financial resources uh, for us to get over the edge here. Well, Aaron, thank you for being such a leader on this front and for helping to coordinate with everyone else and for all your efforts to advocate for life, faith, and family. Uh, appreciate you so much. Thanks for being a part of the webcast. Thanks. Okay. Well, next up, we get to hear from someone else who I saw a couple of weeks ago in Ohio, my longtime friend and pro-life advocate, Mark Harrington from Created Equal. Mark, how are you this evening? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and we were having a little fun before the webcast started. I was trying to convince Mark that he needed to wear a tie, but you know, he just wouldn't do it. He was just like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna be casual for tonight. Mark, I appreciate so much all that you do to advocate for life. And you know, you are an illustration as well as the people that you lead through Created Equal in what one person can do to make a difference. And sometimes we look at the Goliath of the abortion industry and Planned Parenthood, and is it really possible to be able to topple this giant? But can one person really make a difference? That's what I want to ask you. And what are some specific activities that a person can help with right now in this struggle, regardless of where they live? Well, that's a great question. I was re reflecting on our battle here in Ohio and also across the nation. And of course, we, we refer to the pro-abortion industry as the Goliath, and they certainly are. And so what I did is I went back and read the story today. And what I was struck with was that what David was facing, of course, he was facing Goliath and the Philistines, but the real enemy was fear. Because it says in 1 Samuel that the armies of Israel heard the words of Goliath and they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And see, that's what we're facing. Although we're facing the Goliath of the abortion industry, for sure, we're facing fear as well. And in the story of David and Goliath, we know that David prevailed because of his faith and his courage. And so it is with us. The, you know, the, the, we all know the numbers. The other side raises more money. They spend more money. They control uh, much of the uh, institutions in our nation, a lot of the politics and so forth, especially in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. But we serve a living God. And so so it is with us as we look at this battle here in Ohio, and, and we're going to be, you know, in 2024, we're going to be facing many more of these. In the natural, it doesn't seem possible. But again, we serve a living God who's capable of pulling off these victories. So I would just say this, just as David was one person, he took down Goliath, and then the armies of Israel, you know, vanquished the Philistines. Uh, one person can make a difference on the webcast tonight. No matter where you are, you can make phone calls. Uh, and if you live in Ohio or you could come to Ohio or know someone who lives in Ohio, we can put you to work going door to door. Created Equal is running the volunteer door to door and phone banking effort. Uh, SBA Pro-Life America is running the uh, paid version of that. Uh, combined, we're hoping to reach over a half a million uh, uh, people knocking on doors. Uh, but if you live in Ohio or you want a phone bank, you simply go to createdequal.org slash issue one. You can fill out a little volunteer form there and just check the boxes, whether you want a door to door uh, in door knock or whether you want to phone bank. And then we'll get in touch with you and set you up, put you in the portal and get you working with the ICE 360 app. Uh, so again, createdequal.org slash issue one. If you're in Ohio, we need you to go door to door. We got two weeks left. We're hoping from a volunteer standpoint to knock on 150,000 doors just ourselves with the network that we have in Ohio. And then you can also set, be set up to phone bank anywhere in the country. So again, createdequal.org slash issue one. And I'll close with this, David. And this, this is just something that I did with my team earlier this year. I, I made a banner and I put the words, no regrets on it. Mm -hmm. And I hung it over the door as people, as our staff and volunteers come inside our office. And I shared with our people, I said, when it comes to November 8th, I want us all to have no regrets. And now that doesn't mean that we might have we might have regrets on strategy and maybe we could have done this differently and maybe spent money here or not there. But we didn't want to have regrets when it came to our effort. 
And see, I think everyone on this call can do something to help us in Ohio. And the main thing they can do, of course, is the phone bank. So that's my call to action. Don't have any regrets come November 8th. Help us in Ohio. Because as others said, you know, this is this is for all the marbles here. We've got to stop them here. We don't want to go 0 for 7. Amen. Mark Harrington, thank you so much. It was your telling me about that banner that really provoked the thoughts that had me on the plane the next day saying, what more can I do? Because I don't want to be in that place. And I would just encourage everyone tonight to just say, even if you're just learning about the Ohio battle tonight for the first time, the election's November 7th. November 8th, you're going to wake up and you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to ask yourself, did I do everything I could? And every one of us can pray. Every one of us can spread the word and every one of us can make phone calls regardless of where we are. Or if you're somebody like my friend Patty O'Halloran from Texas who said, I'm just going to go to Ohio and go knock on doors. Maybe there are some who can do that. And for everybody in Ohio, please do everything you can. Go to createdequal.org slash issue one. We'll also have that link in a call to action at the very end here. Mark, thank you, brother. I really appreciate you. And thank you for your leadership on this effort at this critical time. Thanks for having me. You bet. Okay, so next up, I'm going to bring on our last Ohio-specific guest, and then we're going to start getting into the national perspective on this. We are now going to hear from Savannah Martin, and Savannah is Executive Director of Bella Vita Network in Toledo, Ohio. She also leads the Ohio Coalition of Pregnancy Centers and is on the board of the National Association of State Pregnancy Wellness Coalition. Say all that three times fast. <laughs> and Savannah, welcome. Thank you for being a part of the webcast. Appreciate you. Uh, David, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well, Savannah, you know, in the midst of a big public campaign, there's so much noise on television and in the radio and <laughs> ads and everything else. Frequently, we forget about those who are actually really affected by these issues, the yeah. women and the children at risk of abortion. And I know Absolutely. that one of the great solutions is our pregnancy centers. And so from your perspective, what role do our pregnancy centers play in Ohio and also across the country? And how can every one of us help these heroic ministries to serve more women and more children so that we don't have to keep fighting these fights for all time. Absolutely. Well, I just want to give a huge shout out to my fellow pregnancy center staff from across the country that are joining us. I believe that pregnancy centers are the hope filled solution to making abortion unthinkable in our state here in Ohio and in our nation. A few months ago, a woman walked into our pregnancy center in Toledo, Ohio, and she had taken the abortion pill and it hadn't worked. Um, and we praise God for that saved life. Um, but in the midst of her finding out that she was still pregnant and deciding to carry and parent that child, she shared with our staff that when she received the website from a medical physi a physician to buy the abortion pill, she realized upon reflecting on that, that if that medical provider would have just said to her, you can do this, you can be a mother, that she would have never gone through with that abortion. And that is what the pregnancy centers across the state of Ohio and across the country are doing. They are showing up every single day to tell these women that you can do it, but not only to tell them, but to back it up with practical support. The Charlotte Lozier Institute uh, research showed us that in 2022, pregnancy centers across the state of Ohio provided over 32,000 pregnancy tests, over 21,000 ultrasounds, and over 28,000 material needs like strollers, um, diapers, formula, and the like. Women in Ohio are being housed by pregnancy centers. They're going through addiction recovery through pregnancy centers. They're being educated on how to be parents. They're helping being helped with childcare, job placements. We don't need amendments like issue one because pregnancy centers stand ready. I have the privilege to lead the Ohio Coalition of Pregnancy Centers, which is 123 pregnancy centers strong in the state. Issue one jeopardizes the work that pregnancy centers in Ohio and across the country are doing. Mm -hmm. David, I love that you opened up and shared the Ohio motto. Another Ohio motto that I love is don't give up the ship. We are in the home stretch of this motto. And like Commodore Perry says, you know, we might want to let off the gas. We may want to feel like there's no hope, but I would channel us to let's not give up the ship. We can do this. All things are possible. We believe that in Ohio. We believe it for Ohio. But not only are all things possible, David, I also believe that he has chosen us for such a time as this. 
Savannah, amen. Thank you so very much. And thank you for your inspiration. And for everybody, if you're not already involved, get involved in your local pregnancy center, their Absolutely. heroic work. <laughs> uh, Students for Life years ago did a study and reported that 74% of women who had had abortion said if one person had said, I will help you, they would not have had the abortion. So we Absolutely. need to be the ones to come along inside and say, I will help you. And that's how we're going to end this for once and for all. Savannah, thank you so much for being a part of this thank webcast. You. Thank you for your leadership. Appreciate you so much. Okay, so now we're going to start shifting into the national implications of all of this. I want to explain express regret from one of our speakers who at the last second had a conflict. Lila Rose will not be able to join us tonight, and I'm very sorry about that. But she did text me and express her appreciation and her prayers for everybody in Ohio and also expressed that she's very involved behind the scenes in many different ways in Ohio and is helping to spread the word wherever she can. We'll be actually helping to promote this recording of this webcast after the fact. So apologize for her absence, but keep following her on social media. She does great work. And now we get to hear from Marjorie Dannenfelser. Marjorie is the president of Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America. And Marjorie's going to share some of her perspectives on the importance of this Ohio battle and some words of encouragement to all of us. Thank you. And hello, friends. I just want you to know how encouraged I am by what I've seen going on in Ohio that you, I'm sure, have seen too. And it is a unity of spirit a unity of plan, a unity of message in Ohio, that bellwether for every other ballot that will come after it in this country. So that while we are, of course, outfunded again, outspent again, that unity and that determination, that path uh, is open to us. And therefore, um, these last couple of weeks offer a promise to unborn children, uh, to their mothers, that they will lead the country from here on out when it comes to post Roe versus Wade uh, laws in the country. Something beautiful is going on in Ohio that I believe can be replicated in other places, but winning, of course, is what we must see because of the lives saved and women served that will be the outcome of such a victory. I'm grateful to you, and I'm also grateful to the people that we don't even know, that we may never know, the people who are voting in Ohio, who need our prayers. Let's pray together for each and every one of them, that they uh, don't have complications uh, that lead them to not vote, that if they're on the fence, that they see uh, how extreme this law is, that it would prevent even the most modest of protections for unborn children, even partial birth abortion, which we thought we had dealt with, right? Um, and this, uh, if this law passes, if this ballot initiative passes, of course, it would mean that they have no voice at all. Each one of those voters would have no voice in, um, in establishing what the law in Ohio should be because the con Constitution would say they don't have a voice through their legislative um, representatives. So thank you for all that you've done. These two weeks are critical Again, we've got a pathway, no slam dunk, but it is definitely doable. And with him, all things are possible. And with this movement buoyed by him and the good plan and the funding that we have that has come through a lot of it at the very end here, we have a shot to save lives and serve women. So God bless you. And let's go get them. Okay. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Marjorie. And then for everyone who's here, I know we've packed a lot into this 50 minutes we've been together so far. We've also now surpassed 2,600 people participating in this webcast. We have three more national speakers that are going to each touch on the national implications. So hold tight, strap on your seatbelts. It's going to be amazing. And then we'll wrap up with a very quick call to action and ascending forth and you will not want to miss the closing prayer. I have heard this gentleman uh, send forth some holy messages. I'm excited for you to hear from him. So with that, I'm going to bring on my longtime friend and co-troublemaker in the pro-life movement, Kristen Hawkins, president of Students for Life and Students for Life Action. Kristen, how are you tonight? Good. It's so good to be with you, David, and so many friends from across the nation. Uh, you know, it is absolutely critical what's happening in Ohio. Our team has been on the ground since the school year began, even before that moment, getting social media influencers 
active and engaged fighting the misinformation that's happening. Uh, our regional coordinator there, Jamie Curry, and many of you all probably have met who are in Ohio, has been on campuses almost every day um, this semester, changing minds of young people, um, registering voters, registering hundreds of new voters uh, to get out and vote no on issue one. And what's so interesting, I had a call with Jamie earlier today. She was telling me about a woman who emailed her who was going to vote yes. And just after a couple of, you know, bits of information, just one truth shared, uh, the woman changed her mind. And that's what's happening uh, by the dozens every single day on college campuses uh, across the country. So I know uh, we've been talking a lot about the obstacles there that are present, David, in Ohio, um, you know, how we're being outspent, how the enemy deceives and lies. But I wanted to start t tonight sharing some good news um, that this is a common sense issue uh, for so many people. Pro-life, as the governor mentioned earlier in the call, pro-life and pro-choice can agree that this is extremism. This is abortion extremism, and nobody wants to support late-term abortions or abortion extremism. Uh, and so that's really my plea to all of you tonight uh, is to get active. Do not be deterred. You know, Mark Harrington shared uh, just moments ago about the uh, biblical story of David versus Goliath. But what most people don't most people think when they think of the David versus Goliath story, David, is that, uh, you know, this is a million to one long shot that David, you know, overcame this Goliath. But what we know from historical battles throughout world history that David's can win about 60% of the time. Um, and Malcolm Gladwell, the author of The Tipping Point, wrote a whole book about this, right? Um, and he, you know, he studied all these historical battles where those who were being, you know, outspent and outgunned won these battles. And he said that the, those who were victorious, they substituted effort for ability. So they worked so hard. They were un undeterred, as Mark was saying, unafraid to go into battle. And the final thing that uh, all of these historical Davids who have won, starting with the original David, um, was they were willing to believe. They were willing to believe that victory was possible if they worked hard enough, if they were if they were courageous enough. And I, that's what I would want to impress upon everyone who's been listening to this call tonight is, are you willing to believe that the pro-life movement will be victorious? That in Ohio, we will change the trajectory and the momentum that we're seeing in the pro-life movement that will literally determine whether our fight to make abortion unthinkable and unavailable, to abolish abortion lasts years or it lasts decades. That's how important what happens on November 7th is. And so I would encourage folks, David, uh, if you haven't been moved to sign up yet tonight, sign up. Um, whether you live in Ohio or another state, especially for folks who are joining outside of the states, go to abortionfreecities.org slash start, and we can help you get you know, prepared if you live in one of those nine to 13 states that may be following uh, Ohio's uh, footsteps for a ballot referendum. You can also go to abortion on the ballot tour.org slash Ohio. This is where you can find our free digital church kits that you can download. You can find a free postcard that you can download, print off tonight, send to every neighbor, every person you know in Ohio. This is where you can sign up to do door knocking with Created Equal or SBA list or even do phone banking with us. This is like a one-stop shop we've been giving our student activists. It's abortion on the ballot tour.org slash Ohio. But uh, we can do this. Um, but it, it's up with us to believe. Amen to that. Okay, Kristen, one quick last thing before you go. I remember years and years ago, and you took a lot of heat for this because you were one of the first leaders to publicly go around saying, we are going to be a post-road generation. And a lot of people were like, oh, don't say we're winning when we're not. And then on the day that Roe was overturned, you were on the steps of the Supreme Court and you got to read out the first words read out about the Dobbs decision overturning Roe. And that picture was on the front page the next day, of the New York Times. So you clearly have a vision of a not only a post Roe America, but a pro-life future. So just one or two sentences, just your thoughts. What will it take for us to have progress to be in a pro-life future, to be able to win victories like this in Ohio and beyond? 
You know, one of the things I, I, I actually did a webcast earlier tonight about this. One of the things we weren't prepared for in the pro-life movement um, going into a, a row reversal was that too few people know how much we care and and how much we love and how much we do. And I know this from our own Institute for Pro-Life Advancement polling, the brand of the pro-life movement. I truly believe in that adage of people don't know how, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And we see this every day on college and high school campuses. I certainly see this. Um, And what our Abortion Free Cities program has found is 75% of our neighbors don't know a pregnancy center resource exists in their community. Haven't even heard of it. Have never heard of a maternity home. And so one of the things I'm thinking about as we move forward, after we defeat issue one in Ohio, as we prepare other states to, to, to wage this battle against these ex- abortion extremist campaigns, the first step we have to do is to show our communities that we love her more and that what all that we do. And so I think that folks go to abortion free cities, start a campaign. We go door knocking before a ballot referendum, before an election, just telling people about the resources of the pregnancy resource center movement in their community. We, we greet them at the doors with diapers and wipes and formula uh, with a wagon. And the people are like, what? This is the pro-life movement. And then we can have a conversation with them about abortion and abortion extremism. And that's when we change minds. And those are permanent minds change. So if we're thinking about making abortion unthinkable in our lifetime, we got to start with showing America who we are. And for those who are thinking right now, I could never go knock on a door and talk to somebody about abortion. Just remember that with God, all things are possible. If a little guy like David could go out some smooth stones and take down a giant like Goliath, every one of us can do something over these next two weeks and then beyond. Kristen Hawkins, thank you so much. (laughs) <laughs> Have a great rest of your evening. Thank you, Kristen, for joining us. Okay, it is now time for me to bring on another one of my heroes, a great pro-life leader, Carol Tobias, who serves as the president of the National Right to Life Committee. Carol, how are you this evening? I'm doing great, David. Thank you for having me on. Oh my goodness, we're so glad you're here. And Carol, you lead an organization that's made up of 50 state Right to Life affiliates, including Ohio Right to Life, we heard from Peter Range, and also more than 3,000 local chapters. So you have this profound national vantage point. And I would love for you to share why you think this Ohio battle is so important and what ripple effect this will have across the nation. Well, I will tell you, because of the six ballot measures that unfortunately we lost uh, last year, we have states all over the country that are worried because they see it coming at them. Uh, There are two states for sure already, Maryland and New York are going to have ballot measures on uh, on their ballots next year. Um, Constitutional amendments to, to enshrine abortion into their state constitution. There are at least nine states that don't have the process underway, and I expect more to actually uh, continue. Uh, But many of the states are already preparing for this battle, and they're looking to Ohio as a turning point, uh, hoping that this will put some brakes on the the pro-abortion onslaught that we have seen. Um, In some states, it's kind of crazy. They already have a law that says abortion is allowed for any reason, pretty much up to birth, Um, And yet the extremists want to put measures on the ballot so that they can amend the Constitution so that their law can't be changed in the future by the legislature. And I will tell you that if your state does not have the citizen initiative measure to where you can amend your Constitution, you're not off the hook because those abortion extremists are going to be coming for your pro-life candidates because they are going to want changes in the state legislature. Now, Democratic candidates are being told that support for abortion is the magic bullet. It's the the special weapon that's going to help them win. The conventional wisdom among uh, the media and pollsters is that abortion is a winning issue for Democrats. So stopping this measure in Ohio is going to bring those efforts not, 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 not definitely to a halt, um, but it's going to at least make everybody kind of stop and think that maybe this isn't quite the issue that they thought it was. Now, Peter Range with Ohio Right to Life has been stressing through this entire campaign that we need God's intervention. He's been asking people constantly to pray. Now, something I'd heard a long time ago was work like everything depends on us, but pray like it depends on God. And the pro-life movement has been doing that. Um, We work and we pray. Now, if when we succeed, um, we aren't going to declare victory. 
We're not going to say we won and go home, but I'm going to be a downer tonight. If for some reason this measure does not pass, we cannot give up. We cannot give in. We're not going to walk away. We don't quit. Um, moms and babies are going to need us. Uh, whether this battle um, continues in Ohio, um, whether we win or lose this, this ballot measure, we do not give up. We have been in this movement for too long. We know what we're doing. We know what's right. And we're going to fight. Now, the pro-life movement around the world was re-energized when we overturned Roe v. Wade. Um, and they're still looking to America, as Ronald Reagan said, you know, we are the city, shining city on a hill. They are still looking to us. Um, our victory of overturning Roe was encouragement and hope for them. Uh, so we need to do everything we can to continue to be that light for the rest of the world. Um, and I am going to be right in there with everybody praying as hard as we can for Ohio. So Amen. God bless everyone in Ohio and everything that's being done. Amen. Carol, thank you so very much for your words. Thank you for your leadership and for really seeing this from a national perspective and helping us to recognize that we are going to have wins, we're going to have losses. But kind of like what Mark Harrington was saying earlier, I just think for all of us, now that we know, once we know, we have to do everything we can from whatever platform, whatever vantage point, whatever gifts God has given us over these next two weeks to help win this fight and then be ready for the next one. Some of us thought overturning Roe was going to be this huge victory, and it was, praise God, but we have a whole lot more work to do. And so thank you, Carol, for helping to point us towards that and help us to realize this is a marathon. It's not just a sprint. Appreciate you being with us. Okay, our last national speaker, but then hold on, you are going to love the pastor who's going to close us out in prayer. I'm telling you, stay tuned. You won't want to miss this. Our last national speaker is my longtime friend, and I think she's muted, so make sure to unmute your microphone there, Jeannie Mancini. Jeannie is the president of the March for Life, and Jeannie, how on earth are you doing tonight? <laughs> David, I'm doing well. Wow, what a lineup of speakers you've had tonight. It's really it is crazy, and you're like batting cleanup. You're here at the end. You're going to like knock it out of the park for us. So, <laughs> Jeannie, here's what I'd love from you. So you lead the largest annual human rights demonstration in the entire world, the March for Life. So you have seen firsthand the vital importance of unity across our movement. So how has the March for Life been helping to build unity across Ohio in the midst of this fight? But then also, I guess more broadly, how can all of us as part of the broader pro-life movement be united with Ohio in this crucial time of need for them? Mm. Okay, what a question. So let me try to back in. I truly believe that it is indeed the, the unity of the many marchers nationally over the years that helped to overturn Roe. I mean, gosh, let's admit there were so many different different things that were happening, mostly God's grace, right? But the collective millions of marchers over the years that crossed the Supreme Court that made such a strong statement to the Supreme Court justices that Roe was not settled law that ultimately had a, a massive impact, you know, on that decision that came down June 24th, 2022. Now, here we are in the States, and I would say all eyes are on Ohio, as um, many others have hinted earlier tonight. And this, this is massive. Carol just talked about the six states that we've already had really hard defeats in. And then, David, you've referred to the think eight to 11 states that we could be looking at over the course of the next year or two. And so this ballot initiative and this vote in just a couple of weeks is so enormously significant. And I mean, just broadly, the implications of unity are enormous. Peter hinted at it earlier tonight when he mentioned John 17. Um, there are all sorts of scriptural passages talking about the importance of unity. Um, I'm also thinking of a wonderful former president of the United States who said that a house divided against itself will fall. And so we do need to bring everyone together um, as we have been. I personally was so honored to be at the Ohio March for Life on October 6th, just a few weeks ago. I got to hear the wonderful David B. Wright give his remarks the evening before the Ohio March for Life. And it was truly one of the most inspiring speeches I think I've ever heard in the pro-life mm -hmm. movement that night. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. And then the next day to see well over 5,000 Ohioans strong and many coming in from around the country to show that they do not want issue one to succeed. And not only that, that there's so many, um, there's so much confusion over issue one and that if, if it does succeed, as we've heard already tonight, that not only 
would Ohio be returned to a pre-Dobbs, you know, kind of standard, but it would go way beyond and allow for late-term abortion, late-term painful abortion, even until the moment of death. And all of us here tonight know that even one abortion is too many, that we don't want that for any woman or any child, but that even people who are pro-choice in Ohio don't want what this would stand for if issue one does indeed pass. So yes, we are joined in unity, um, praying and fasting because first and foremost, this is a spiritual battle. And so praying and fasting for this victory, which would mean a no, uh, to be clear, on issue one in Ohio on November 7th and um, and really at the March for Life. So our role, of course, is to unite people at the national level every January but also at the state level, our wonderful David B. Wright has helped us with this program. But this year, we're in eight states, including Ohio. It's our second second annual March for Life in Ohio. But next year, we'll be in 16. And we plan to be in all 50 states over the next five to six years at the March for Life. So as we're seeing these dangerous and I think um, erroneous, really, ballot initiatives come before states, we're there with you and most especially in Ohio. So we are joining you with our thoughts, our prayers, our fast, everything for a victory on November 7th. So thanks so much, David, for doing this tonight. And thanks for having me. Oh, my goodness. Jeannie, thank you so, so very much. And I couldn't agree with you more about the importance of prayer and fasting. And I just really want to say also, I'm so proud of you and your team for these state marches for life. Thank you. Because as they have spread and, you know, we recognize that when the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, that didn't end abortion. What they did is they sent the decision back to the American people through our exactly. elected officials in the states and in Congress. And so what we do at the state level, at the local level, is more important than ever before. And one of the most important ways we can rally together and be united is through these state marches for life. And having just been at the Pennsylvania one a few days ago, it was great to see all the people there. So uh, I was thank excited you. to hear about the Ohio one as well. So God bless you. Thank you for your leadership. And thanks for all that you do, Jeannie. Appreciate you. Okay, so we are close to wrapping up. We're gonna have a closing prayer in about three or four minutes here, but before we do, surprise, we're actually going to invite you to get involved. And I know every speaker to some degree has been inviting you in some way, shape or fashion to be involved in this effort. So I'm gonna lay out a few things and then I'm gonna point out the buttons down below the video if you're watching us on the webcast or I'll tell you how to get to those if you're listening or watching somewhere else. So first and foremost, and numerous speakers, Jeannie just said this, we need to pray and we need to fast. We have two weeks left. Can we each commit to every single day, pray for Ohio, pray for those who are knocking on doors, pray for the ads to reach the right people with the right message, pray for people to go with a formed conscience into the polling place. Can we pray for people to recognize that abortion is not the answer to anything? Can we pray? Because also we recognize that with man, this seems impossible. All the polling would say, oh, it's probably going to be a loss. So oh, just go ahead and take your losses. No, with God, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we pray. But also, I really want to underscore the urgency of fasting. I know many of you are participating in 40 Days for Life, and I thank you for that, having been a part of that for so much of my life. But fasting is such an important part of our spiritual journey because in Scripture we're told there are some demons that can only be driven out through prayer and fasting. And fasting can take on many different forms. Maybe it's to give up one meal a day or one type of food or give up a certain type of drink or give up social media for two weeks, unless you're posting information about helping people get aware of the Ohio effort. But can we each, between now and the end of election day, November 7th, that's two weeks, can we each commit to give up something something that is really personal to us, something that is meaningful to us, something that without it, we will be hungering because then we can direct that hunger to God and then he can work through our prayers and through our fasting. Can we pray and can we fast? That's the first thing. I hope everybody, if you're not a person of faith, that's fine. For everybody else, let's pray, let's fast every single day between now and election day. Second thing, spread the word. This is all going to be driven now by word of mouth. We've got two weeks. So first of all, if you were blessed by any part of this webcast, as soon as we're done, this will become a replay video. Share it with everybody you know. Pass it around. Get everybody informed. Those in Ohio, those outside of Ohio. And then particularly, if you have family, friends, colleagues, anybody in Ohio, help to educate them, get them engaged, get them involved, to help them to know what is at stake. So pray and fast, spread the word, and third is get 
involved. Can we all carve out a little bit of our time and use a little bit of our talents over these next two weeks so that, like Mark Carrington said, on November 8th when we wake up, we don't have any regrets. We gave it everything we could with the time, with the, the talents, with the limitations that we had. What is two weeks in the bigger scheme of things? But two weeks could change the course of history if all of us get involved. And to do that, I'm going to tell you how to go about doing that. If you're watching this webcast on the web page and there's a button down below, it says five action steps. Click that button if you haven't already, and it will open up another page in your browser. If you say, I'm not watching this, I'm listening to this, or I'm watching this on YouTube or somewhere else, then go ahead and click, uh, go to your web browser and type in protectwomenohio.com slash take action. So protectwomenohio.com slash take action. No spaces and take action. Protectwomenohio.com slash take action. And when you go to that page, it opens up in a new tab in your browser. At the top, it says take action. Here are the five things you can do to support the pro-life fight in Ohio. Number one, and we heard Mark talk about this. Also, Susan B. Anthony is driving heavily on this, is the door-to-door -door efforts. So if you are in Ohio or you can get to Ohio or you know people in Ohio, the door-to-door -door effort is instrumental. And on that page, you'll see the link to createdequal.org slash issue one that Mark referenced. And that is where you can learn about and get involved in the door-to-door. -door. For all the rest of us who may not be able to make it to Ohio over these next two weeks, you can still phone bank. Wherever you are, you can get in, logged in very easily. So again, click that link on that page, createdequal.org slash issue one, and you can get involved in phone banking from wherever you are. Every vote, every call, every voice matters. So do that, number one. The second thing is if you say, hey, I really want to go all in, Susan B. Anthony is still, as we heard from Peter and others, is bringing on paid canvassers. These are people who are working all day long, knocking on doors, and they're being paid by Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America. So you can contact Michelle Ashley at Michelle at sbalistfield.org. Don't worry about remembering it. It's on that page. So go to the page, protectwomenohio.com slash take action. It's under item number two. If you say, I want to go and heck, I can make some money while I'm doing it. It's not a lot, but hey, you're making a difference while you're at it. That's number two. Number three, social media. If you're not fasting from social media over these next two weeks, follow the different groups we've heard from. Protect Women Ohio, first and foremost, Ohio Right to Life, Center for Christian Virtue, Right to Life Action Coalition of Ohio, Created Equal, and not only follow them, but then share their content far and wide. These are the groups that are really driving the fight. Take the articles they share, the updates, the videos, pass them along, follow them, and that'll also remind you to pray and fast. Number four, if you are a person of prayer and you want to join the prayer Zoom calls that they hold every Friday at 3 p.m., you can register with the Director of Communications at Ohio Right to Life, Rachel, and her email is on that page. But you can join those prayer calls to be united with the people in Ohio and people outside Ohio praying for this effort. And then the fifth item on that page is make a donation. And I think you heard many times about the importance of we got to get ads on the air. We've got to fund this effort. Two weeks to do everything we possibly can. And I'm going to invite you tonight to consider a sacrificial gift, not an easy gift, but one that reflects how serious of an issue this is and how big a God we serve and then respond to him not to me. And there's a link on that page, but I'm going to even make it easier for you. If you're watching on the webcast right now, there's a second button down below the video on your left side, right side. Sorry, I, I'm trying to think backwards here. That simply says donate now. As Peter talked about, the pro-life side is being outspent more than two to one, but Planned Parenthood's poll numbers have been dipping five points despite spending millions of dollars. We're within the range of possibility. And it's because the prayers, it's the on the ground uh, work of volunteers. But if there were more financial help, they could really push through these last two weeks towards victory. And all of us, I'm not asking you to do something that I'm not willing to do. I'm not getting paid a nickel to do this webcast. I did this because I felt like I don't want to have any regrets on November 8th. And I'm inviting you to do exactly what I did right before we logged in. I clicked that donate now button and I made my gift. And it was a gift that it, it hurt a little bit because it was a stretch. But I realize that I've got to do my part so I'll have no regrets on November 8th. And so I'm inviting you to also do the same. So go to those five action steps, find the one or ones that you can get involved in, make your most generous donation, and together we can make sure to stop the state-by-state -state expansion of abortion to help Ohio in this crucial fight and make a profound difference. Not because of us, 
because with God, all things are possible. I want to thank our speakers this evening, Marjorie Danifelser, Kristen Hawkins, Jeannie Mancini, Carol Tobias, Bishop Daniel Thomas, Governor Mike DeWine. Wonderful surprise to have him on. Attorney General Dave Yost, Peter Range, Aaron Bear, Mark Harrington, Molly Smith, David Forbes, who we're about to hear from, and Savannah Martin. Also to the organizers, Protect Women Ohio, thank you so much. And for the team helping with the David B. Wright Show, thank you for all the work that you did to make this possible. For the partners, March for Life, Susan B. Anthony, Pro-Life America, Students for Life of America, Live Action, National Right to Life Committee, Ohio Right to Life, Right to Life Action Coalition of Ohio, Center for Christian Virtue, and Created Equal, thank you for leading the charge, both nationally and on the state level on this fight. And I also want to thank all those listed on the page below that were the co-sponsors of this event to help make it possible. Pro-Life Partners Foundation, Thomas More Society, who I didn't even know till today, they filed an amicus brief in support of Ohio. Feminists for Life of America, Life Legal Defense Foundation, National Black Pro-Life Coalition, Pro-Life Action League, Pro-Life Action Ministry, Smart Women's Healthcare, Stand True, Pro-Life Outreach. See, when you don't have the credit scrolling, you just have to say it really fast. The Justice Foundation, The Moral Outcry, Douglas Leadership Institute, Abortion Service, Survivors Network, Red Sea Apostolate, Dr. Michael New, Monica Miller, Citizens for Pro-Life Society, Janet Morana of Priests for Life. And finally, thanks to you. Well, thank you for being a part of this webcast. Thank you for doing whatever you can do over these next two weeks. And remember the words of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up, we have to continue this fight and to close us with a prayer and to send us forth with, I believe, Holy Spirit fire. I would like to invite on, who I just met a couple of weeks ago, Pastor David Forbes. Pastor Forbes, thank you so much for sticking with us till the very end. I would love any concluding thoughts and then also to send us forth in prayer. Absolutely, David. And thank you so much for having me. And this was a great night. What an incredible a lineup of uh, speakers and encouragers that you have uh, lined up. Uh, I'll pray, but what I think about this is uh, simply, you know, when you pray for rain, you've got to be prepared to deal with the mud also. And reversing role was the rain, but the mud is these incessant fights, the lies, the deception, and the confusion. And God has given us the spirit of wisdom to deal with that and to win. And so uh, the, the winning is is on November 7th. It is also winning the hearts and minds of men and women after November 7th. No matter what, we're going to win their hearts and show them that love is the way and that Christ is the way. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and the blood that he shed on the cross to take our sin away, to give us moments like this where we can come together and we can feel your presence and you can be with us and we can sense you. Thank you, Father, for calling us to this battle. We know that you called us so we can handle it. Uh, we know that the body of Christ is a ship of war that is built for battle, and so we are ready for this. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom. Thank you for the spirit of insight and the spirit, Lord, of counsel. Even in these last two weeks, special wisdom, special strategy, special insight that helps us to gain the victory, to get our message, to get our resources, and to get this victory. We bind the spirit of confusion in this state. We bind the spirit of lies. We bind the spirit, Lord, of control, demonic control. of, uh, And we bind the spirit of abortion, that spirit of child sacrifice that has plagued nearly every culture in the history of civilization. We break those spirits. We bind that spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus. We know it's an evil spirit and we have the authority because of what Christ did on the cross. Give us, Lord, the spirit of unity. Thank you for these beautiful Catholics on this call tonight. Thank you for the beautiful evangelicals, the Protestants. Thank you, Father, for bringing unity to the body of Christ because that unity is something our enemy does not have. Lord, they have money. They have the media, they have the lies, but they don't have the unity. And they do not have the spirit of Christ. They do not have the blood of Jesus. They do not have the power of the resurrection. They do not have angels and they don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. And so we're not sad for where we are. We're grateful that we're in this place where we can win. Unite us and bring us to victory. We will give you the glory and praise and honor in the name of your son, Jesus. It is in his name we pray. Amen.
Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Forbes. It is such a joy to be with you. Thank you for your spiritual leadership and thank you for being a part of this incredible work in Ohio. God bless you. I hope to cross paths with you again sometime very soon. And friends, I just want to thank you so much. I want to say, let's stay steadfast. Let's press on in this work. Let's never lose hope. Let's trust in God. And let's remember that state motto of Ohio with God, all things are possible. And I'm going to bring back on for the final word, Peter Range. Peter, what an amazing evening. See what you made happen. I'm so proud of you. Peter, I'm going to let you send us off with the closing word. David, uh, thank you again so much. What a tremendous night of the work of the Holy Spirit. So let's give him the glory and honor. And let me just level set as we finish the night. Uh, polling wise, we're behind. Um, I'd rather be in their shoes, but there is a pathway to victory. And my father spent his entire life behind. He was paralyzed at age 11. Uh, he became completely paralyzed at age 44. But despite those paralyzations, every day he woke up and he said yes to life. I want to invite the nation to join us here in Ohio to say yes to life by helping us with a victory on no on issue one this November. Visit us at protectwomenohio.com. Join us in prayer and fasting and volunteering and donating if you can, protectwomenohio.com to bring home a victory for the pro-life movement and those babies who are in need of our voice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter Range. God bless you, everyone, and have a great night. Talk to you soon.